If you have any questions regarding those two companions or other companions or anything that regarding your religion, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to answer it. Otherwise, we'll say Allah ta'ala alam, Allah knows best. Now, Bismillah. Rakhaw khairan for that person who gave me. This is Ajwa, yeah? It's not me, one brother, he's from Ajwa. It's Ajwa. from Medina. This is Ajwa. Yes. Yeah. You know what's Ajwa? In terms of taste, it's not the best. So curry is the best. That's, that's cool, correct. In terms of best. In terms of price, it's the most expensive. It's expensive because of the hadith of the Prophet. Because the Prophet said, if the person in the morning takes seven days of these, the ajwa, and he said, Tumur al Aliya. Tumur al Aliya, al Aliya is a place where Abu Bakr, second wife, she was living there in the Aliya. Those days called Tumur al Aliya, or they call it the ajwa. Those days, Prophet gave them specialty. That if he takes seven days from them in the morning, فَقَدْ أَمِنَ مِنَ السُّمْ وَقَدْ أَمِنَ مِنَ السِّحْرِ He will have an antidote, a protection regarding two things, magic and poison. Now it doesn't mean that you have a cup of poison here and you take seven days, and I don't want to try them, and then you drink poison and you say, ah, look, no, no, that doesn't work like this. That may be the Holy Ghost of these things, but not in Islam. <laughs> that means you tawakku ala Allah, don't go to the land of the magic. Don't drink deliberately. But if you happen to be walking in the land of magic, this will save you. If you happen that you had poison and you didn't know about it, this will at least make you not to die through the poison. The seven days. Right? Allahu ta'ala a'lam. And zamzam water, this is, I think zamzam, huh? Pure zamzam or mixed water? Against the water. I will know, inshallah. <laughs> Zamzam, this Zamzam, but if you put it in a plastic cup, the plastic cup gives it a taste. The best thing to drink Zamzam water is from a glass. The cup makes it a give it a taste, especially if you put it in a, a, a humid or hot. It, subhanAllah, the, the plastic itself gives a taste in the water. Zamzam water is the best water on the face of the earth. Zamzam water has got a big long story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to the mother of Ismail. Hajar and to her son, and still going on until, and it will not stop since that. And this is a miracle the Zamzam water. And Prophet he said, It's a food for the person who is hungry, and it's a cure for the person who is ill. Allah Musta'an, subhanAllah. And I'm telling you, if you are taking it for this, Allah will give you your intention. And the Prophet he said, Ma'u Zamzam bima shurimana. Zamzam water is for what you had drank it for. So you drank it for. Success, inshallah, Allah give you success, be And you drink the Zamzam water, not standing up as people think. You drink the Zamzam water and all other types of water sitting down. You can't stand up. There's no respect for you when you stand up to drink Zamzam water. Actually, you have sinned because the Prophet of Allah he said to the person who was drinking, standing up, sit. Do you want the cat to drink with you? He said, Messenger, no. He said, well, something worse drank with you. Shaitan, vomit. So he commanded him to take it out. How many people now they drink standing up? Do you need a report from Americans and British to tell you that it is no good to drink standing up? Then you'll believe Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or you believe him without these reports. Okay? Do you need a report? Do you need a report to tell you that when the Prophet sallam says in Sahih Bukhari, no, he didn't say in Bukhari. That is, if the fly comes into your drink, then dunk it. Or oh, verily. One wing has got a cure, and one wing has got a disease. You don't know which one, dunk it. And take the fly out, and then drink your drink. Okay? Uh, Maurice Bokai, don't know if you heard of him or not. Maurice Bokai. We are in Bokai, it's Bokai, actually. Maurice Bokai, this person, he was talking about the Islam is to be good, and the religion is to be good, and then at the end of it, he said, but no, well, there is things from the Prophet Muhammad, it's not wrong, it's wrong. And he used that, it's wrong. You are wrong, because there is no report. The medicine did not prove yet this. Well, if they did not prove it, it doesn't mean it's not already existing. For very lots of things hasn't been proved before, it's been proved these days. So, 
If you don't want to drink it, it's up to you. If you're disgusted with the fly, no problem. But if you want to drink, you drink, because the drink is not really, especially if it's a very nice drink, you like it, and the fly went in there, just take it, bank it, and throw it, and depend upon that. Don't wait for reports from America or anybody else, because the Prophet of Allah is peace from divine. And when he said that to you, he knows what he's saying. And that's a hadith authentic in Sahih al-Bukhari. So Zamzam water is the best of water. You drink it. And I've given it to lots of people who had illness. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the cure. One of them is called pancreatitis. I don't know if you know that disease. It's very, very, very painful and serious. And it's one of those diseases that if you get them, you might die. It's a stone it goes from your gold brother on top of your pancreas. It blocks it. It might kill you. Sometimes they remove the whole pancreas because of it. And it's so painful. The person who's got it, he said, the only pain that could describe it is like when a person delivers a baby. I said, you're a man, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> how do you know the pain of delivering a baby? He said, because I, I could see my wife when she delivered the baby. So the pain of, of Wilad. But then he said to me, I read it on the internet that a woman, she had it. And she said that this pain, I only felt it when I was delivering the baby. So, uh, this Zamzam, when I've given it to him, <coughs> Alhamdulillah, he's been killed. And he took it. I, I mean, bring it. And every time I go put some water, I put it in, in front of his house and I leave as well. I leave it in the morning. Even one day I said to him, I'm going to bring it. And I did not bring it because it was too cold. It was snowing that late, that nice these days. And, and I found him, so I phoned him and said, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm late, but I'm bringing it now. I said, well, I thought you put it there, but my Christian neighbor took it. <laughs> no, 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 your Christian neighbor did not take it. I did not bring it. <laughs> it's a good thing if you took it, alhamdulillah, <laughs> to drink the Zamzam water. Zamzam water? I'm not going to share it. <laughs> it's very nice. If you have it, grab it. Inshallah. Clear, inshallah. Uh, concerning Zayd bin al-Haritha, um, there is some confusing, you know, sometimes some other, you know, non muslim they do ask me this question and say how the Prophet ﷺ, he married uh, the wife of his son. So could you elaborate a little bit on this, you know, because it creates... Sayyid ibn Haritha radiallahu anh, how the Prophet of Allah marries his wife, Zainab, the ex-wife, you could say. First of all, Zainab ibn Haritha, we're going to talk about him, he's one of the companions, that's number one. Number two, this is not something new. This is an old. This is from the beginning. They don't really say that because they've read the books which is against Islam. They're using that. And then only that, they go further. And the Prophet Sallallahu he was lewd or lowered into, you know, his cousin. Zainab, he was his cousin, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even he saw her before the hijab. He saw her before the hijab. And number two, Zayd was not the son of the Prophet of Allah. The adaptation that took place at the time of the Jahiliyyah, if a person adopts a person exactly like the West these days, the, the, far, the person who adopts, he gives the name to that person. So it would be the so-and-so, the son of him. And the Jahiliyyah used to do that. Are they still doing it today? Which is not allowed in Islam. I'm not talking the Muslim, they do it. The non muslim But some of the Muslims, they follow suit. Islam came to abolish that. Even if you have nursed him from your own wife and becomes, you know, a person who is your son through nursing, you know, through suckling, you know, but he cannot carry your name. He has to be attributed to his real father. So they used to call Zayn, who is a slave being given to him by Khadija of the Lord, his son. They say Zayd ibn Muhammad. Zayd, the son of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, later on Zayd, he marries Zainab. And as soon as he marries him, a dispute takes place between them. Dispute. And the Prophet of Allah already been told by Allah the Almighty that she's going to be your wife. She's going to be your wife. But the Prophet sallam, he knows what's going to take place if he's going to take her as a wife later on. What the people are going to say. So the dispute is taking place between Zayd and Zainab and the one who's, you know, the one who's arbitrary, the counselor, the counseling. 
is from the Prophet of Allah. And he's trying his best to set everything correct. It's like begging Zayd, please stay with your wife. And begging his wife, stay with your husband. But they don't want to. They're stubborn, both of them. So she divorces her. Because he doesn't want to. So after he divorced her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands him from seven heaven to the Prophet of Allah to marry her. So, but after he had Zayd made watan from her, that means he had they done what he's done from her, then Zawajnaka, Allah said, we have given you as a wife, as a spouse. Why? For number one, to abolish the idea with the kuffar that the adoption is meaning his son. Because in Islam and in before Islam, you cannot marry the ex-wife of your son. She's still your daughter-in-law. Do you understand that? No matter why he divorced her or not, you're not allowed to take her as a wife. So Allah is commanding him to, to do that because Zayn is not your son. So that is why Zainab she used to boast in front of the other wives that you married the Prophet of Allah from the dunya. Allah got me married to my <laughs> Prophet. <laughs> Allah from the seventh heaven commanded the Prophet to marry me. He used to boast, you know, I've got an edge on you. <laughs> So that's how we answer them. But first of all, we don't go with this. Are you trying to, if you want to become, if you want to understand Islam, we'll give you. But we'll give you from the sources of Islam. You're going to read from those sources which are anti-Islam. You're not going to end up with any result. Because after he finishes with this, he's going to go to you. What about marrying nine wives? After that, what about marrying nine years old? Six years old, Aisha. Endless. From one point to another point. And you're going to have doubts in your mind. You're going to do anything with that guy. So please, first of all, understand. Is this guy trying to understand religion? Or is trying just to put doubt in the mind of yours? If he is, then don't waste your time. Well, verily, really, the hearts are weak. And the doubts are got hooks. You know hooks? And the doubts come, the shubuha, like hook your heart. And it's very hard to keep that hook away from your heart. It's going to keep hooking to you. And going to come to your mind. Oh, we don't want you to be losing your religion because of that. Do you understand? what those happen. Lots of people. If you don't end up your religion, you're going to go to another sect, for example. One person, he was a Muslim, became a non-Muslim, Christian, even I became a priest, head of a church. It happens. Very few, but it happens because of these things. So be careful. Alhamdulillah, the religion is very all clear and everything, but even the Prophet of Allah, when he saw Umar Khattab, radiallahu anhu, holding a piece of the Torah, he was really annoyed. And his face was red. Are we going to be with Jews? Wallahi, if Musa السلام, was alive, he would not do anything except to follow me. So why do you need to read it in the, you know, you have extra time? The book of Allah, Quran. Okay? Today I was asked this question by a person who is just recently embraced Islam. And he said, ah, you know, and the Quran, and the Quran says, you know, those people who read the gospel, the gospel, the Injil, and I want to read, go and read the Bible. Because it talks about the gospel. Do you advise me to read the Bible? I said the gospel that the Prophet Allah is talking about is the real one, the original one. Still, some of it is still there, but there are lots of things that have been added by Mr. Paul, 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 Paul. That Paul who had changed the face of the religion of the Christianity. So I don't advise you to read from that, because you know you might be ending up. You have doubts in your mind. So if you have the person, you think he wants to embrace Islam, you think there's good in him, no problem. Otherwise, leave him. You don't have any waste of time. If he's got time, I haven't got time. And that's what uh, Abu Ayyub al-Sikhtiyan. Ayyub al-Sikhtiyan is one of the great scholars. Abu Ayyub al-Sikhtiyan, he, Mubtada came to him. He said, can I have a word? Mubtada means an innovator, innovation. Can I have a word? He said, not even half a word. And he left. <laughs> not one word, even half. And he put his fingers in the thing. And that is why the scholar he said, Wallahi, I would rather have pigs and monkey, monkeys next to me, but not a person of al bidah next to me. Pigs and monkeys, no problem. But a person who got bidah, he might pollute my heart. He might pollute my mind. That's why the people of the Ahl Sunnah before they used to be scared from al bidah. Firra min al majzum, firraka min al Run away from the person who got leprosy as much as you run away from the lion. When you run away from the lion, you look back, you keep running. Keep running, you're gonna look back and you've had it. Because you, 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 you look back and that's how, that's how, by the way, the deer is being caught by the beast. You know that? You know the deer, the gazelle, 
is much faster than the cheetah, much faster than the lion, the lioness. But because he keeps looking back, he delays himself. And that's how the beast will catch him. Catch him. So you want to run away from the lion, run away, don't look back. Same thing, run away from those people in the ventures. Run as much as you can. Don't come to them. They'll hook you a long time. It's not going to the question. Now. Just for uh, you talked about uh, drinking, standing up. What about uh, eating? Do you do you have to sit down? Or can you? the cash brothers. I would like the brothers if they do have spare five for three minutes, inshallah. We'll finish the class and we'll go together, inshallah. It's for five minutes instead of in the middle of the class you leave, unless you've got something, of course, to unload <laughs> something else. But it's better as from the etiquette of the knowledge and from the respect as well. We don't really leave our scholars or our teachers when we sit with them until he finishes. And that's how, from the etiquette that we have to learn. And we feel like, we don't have like this gaps. Wallah, we don't have that. That's not from the Sunnah. Fill it up, yes. It's like, Allah, khayal. The brother is asking, is what about standing up in terms of eating? Well, we don't have a hadith from the Prophet of Allah regarding the eating, but we do have the understanding of the companion. Anas radiallahu anhu narrated the hadith in Sahih Imam Musa when he said that the Prophet of Allah, Zajara, Zajara, he did not just prohibit, he told the person off. So I don't know what is the word for it in English. Zajara, he like you are prohibiting, but with a with a tone in your, you know, in your voice. Don't do it. So he's prohibited the person from drinking standing up. They can, huh? You have the word for it? Tell them. Tell them. No, there's a word for it. There's a word for it. Preach for it with negative things. Yeah. Well, when you get it, inshallah, tell me. So the the companions asked Anas, what about eating? So they asked Anas, who's the narrator of the hadith. So Anas, he said, well, aklu ashar. Eating, standing up, is even more of harm, more of evil than drinking, standing up. So that's the companion who narrates the hadith. And we say as a principle, Rawi al-hadith a'lamu bima ruyihi min ghayri. The narrator of the hadith is more knowledgeable regarding what he narrates than anybody else. Because he narrated that, we say that he knows that the eating, and he said it's worse, it's worse. But we do have a narration from the companions with the Prophet of Allah, when they used to travel, they used to eat while they are traveling. That means when they are walking. And when you walk, you don't walk sitting down, do you? you walk standing up. <laughs> so they used to eat while they are walking. So our Imam al Albani, he said, we combine between the two, we say, eating standing up is not allowed. The same thing as drinking standing up. But if you are walking, then we have an exception. If you need to eat, you can eat while you are what? Walking. But not when you are standing still. This is to make the hadith all of them functioning. Otherwise, you're going to make this one working and the other one not working. So if you do all of these hadith, you will know, inshallah, what is the best. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Faddal. Get yourself closer, then I'll answer your question. What did you No. Does that Allah? What are the rights of the prisoners in Islam? The rights of what? Right of a prisoner. A prisoner? Yeah. The right of a prisoner in Islam. Prisoner where? In, in, in a Muslim prison or a yeah, in Muslim prison. British prison? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right for the British prisoner? I don't know. <laughs> you ask the person who's been in a prison. No, but in a war. In a war. You mean the person who is a captive. Person yeah. who is a captive. That means he's been... Uh, if he is a prisoner of war, in the time of the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the time of the Muslims, there was either one of the following, as the ayah says, either he would become a slave, a slave, or he would become a swapping, to swap prisoners with prisoners, or we just set them free for nothing, or we killed them. Those are the four options. The killing is for the sake of that maybe he is a criminal, war criminal, you know, the war criminals, like the ones who are being captured in the Battle of Badr. Prophet of Allah, he asked, what should we do then? They are war criminals. <coughs> so, Umar, he said, kill them. Messenger of Allah. Abu Bakr said, no, 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 we should not kill them. We should ransom them. Allah supported who? <laughs> Umar, radiallahu anhu, should have been killed. These are war criminals. But in terms of the other ones, <coughs> 
Overtly, we know that lots of captives, because of the tolerance of the Prophet of Allah, they embrace what? Islam. So we, got, we said slave, and the slave as well, when he becomes a slave, he set him free. Because he's got reward. You don't want to set him free, it's up to you. And if he becomes a Muslim, you look after him. Abu al-Haytham al-Tihan, radiallahu anhu wa was a rich man. When the Prophet and the companions, he met Abu Bakr, he met Umar, all of them, they wanted to go. And they were hungry, coming out in the time, of, they were hungry, well, they don't have food. The head of the state, they don't have food, mashallah. Prophet of Allah, the head of the state, they don't have food. Came out, there's no food. So they said, let's go to Al-Tihan. Abu al-Haytham al-Tihan, he's got. So they went there, his wife, ah, huh? is he there? No, he did not come back. So they left, they saw, yes, my son, you're he took him there. He took them to this, the orchard he's got. Orchard like a palm tree, he's nice water. So he brought them, he's got wife, cold water, he brought them as well. Rutab, Rutab means the, the stick from the branch, he's got dates, and the dates are very nice and cool. So mountain berry, nice water, drink. There's this Rutab berry that's nice and cool, and he even put the dates into the cold water to make them what? Cool, for the Prophet of Allah. And milk, which is cold as well. He put some cold water on top of the other, the sheep. And the order of the camel in order what? He gave him what? Ice cream. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice ice cream. So the Prophet he was drinking, he said, I don't know how that night. You're going to be asked about this favor. You're going to ask about this blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is ni'mah. Ma'un barin. Shalabun barin. That is milk barin. Rutabun barin. MashaAllah, everything's cast on the cold and everything. Abu Tihan, Abu Haytham, when there is a slave comes to us, okay, come and take your share. We're going to give you a slave. A slave means like a, a servant for you. So when you have booty captives, come and take one. The Prophet of Allah, later on, he has two. So he comes, Abu Haytham, a Tihan. So he says to him, choose, Prophet of Allah, take one. So Messenger of Allah, you pick one for me. So, Prophet said, Al Mustashar al The one who's been consulted, he's been put in the place of trust. So that means I have to choose what is good for me. Take this one because I've seen him praying. He's a Muslim. Take this one because I've seen him what? Praying. Praying what? Salah. salah. Not Salah of the Christian, no, because I'm Muslim. Same, seen him praying. That means he's chosen the one who prays. And then he said to him, Astawsibi khayra. Look after him. So he took him. His wife, she heard the words of the Prophet وسلم, from him. She said, well, the Prophet said, Stawsabi khayr. Now you know him, she will not let go of him because he is going to be what? The servant. She's not going to be cooking nothing. I do nothing. No ironing. No. <laughs> he, he would do everything. So she not let go. So the wife, she will not let go. But look at this wife. She said, she, you will never be able to fulfill the counseling of the Prophet of Allah until you set him free. Because the Prophet said, Stawsibi khayr, look after him. So if you want to do the best to fulfill what the Prophet of Allah told you, set him free. So he set him free. The Prophet of Allah heard what she has done. So she's happy with what she had said. So he said, verily, each person has two confident, bitana tan. Confident in Arabic, bitana is the inside of your garment, close to you. Bitana. Bitana ta'muruhu bi khayr. A good confident will join him to do good. وَبِطَانَ لَا تَأْلُهُ خَبَالَةً And Abitana confident all the time, evil, evil. And he will beautify to the leader, yeah, kill more if you want, it will be better. So he'll start slashing and killing and torturing. And the confident of these, people, these leaders, yeah, you're doing very well. Because they are taking money. بِطَانَ سَيَّةً So here the captive been looked after. And that is why Zayd ibn Muharitha, he was himself a slave. And... His father and his mother, they met him in the camera. They tell him, go and ask the Prophet of Allah. They set you free. He said, I don't want to be free. I want to be the Prophet of Allah. Mm. They don't want to. The Prophet وسلم, he told the companion to look after those people who are slaves. To the extent that some of those people from Ahl Sufa, like Abu Huraira. Ahl Sufa means what? The poor. You know, in the masjid, there's a place called the Sufa. For the unemployed, <laughs> homeless. Uh, 400 companions. One of them is Abu Huraira. Because of the number, he knows a lot of a hadith from the Prophet. Because of the number of a hadith regarding the, you know, the slave, the slave, if you have to give the slave food, you have to give him with your own hand. Imagine giving the slave with your own hand. The master gives him with your own hand. He has to eat from your food, clothes from your same clothes. So if you are Bill Gates, you will become Bill Gates like you. In terms of richness. SubhanAllah. 
So he said, had it been for three things, had it been for three things, I would have wished to be a slave. <laughs> Imagine somebody wished to be a slave. <laughs> what are the three things? Number one, my mother. Because I want to look after my mother. So if I'm a slave for a master, maybe my master tells me, no, 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 you can't go there, I have to be with you. So I would be preoccupied. Number two, because of the hajj. And the hajj has to be as well for the permission of the master. And that's because of that. And number three, because of the jihad. Because the jihad has to be the permission of my master. Otherwise, I would have been wished to be a slave rather than to be happy. You know, Abu Hurairah Allah is to be poor, so poor, that you know sometimes you can't find food. Nothing. Radiallahu anhu arda, one day he was so hungry. So he put himself on the path of Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr, he has to come to the Majid, he has to come through him. So he looks at him and he's, you know, he's going like this and doing like this. He's shocked to tell him I'm hungry. <laughs> Goes like this. He thought maybe he's got jinn or something. He left him. So he put his path into Umar. Ah, he left him. As soon as the Prophet ﷺ saw him, ah, the Prophet ﷺ, he knows. He's hungry. He's doing that because he's hungry. It's not because he's got jinn. And they thought, that, Wallah, I've got no jinn. And even Abu Huraira in the narration, he says, Verily, I stopped Abu Bakr on his path and I said to him, Can you recite me into this verse? And he said, Why? I said, I know the verse and I know how to recite it, but I just wanted to see how hungry I am. <laughs> I've got a stone. You know, my stone, you've got a big stone tied up. But they don't really. Ammar Khattab, please, can you show me this verse? And I know, but he didn't really pay attention, except for the Prophet of Allah. Follow me, Abu Huraira. As soon as he followed him, radiallahu anhu arda, he was there and he asked his wife, Huh? Do you have anything? He's got nothing in his house, the Prophet of Allah. He said, Yeah, such a sadki sent you with milk. So Abu Huraira said, MashaAllah, how do you do that? That's milk. The Prophet of Allah said, Go and call Ahl Sufa. Oh, dear me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's going to call 400 people. You know? <laughs> what's, that, what's that milk is going to do to Abu Huraira? <laughs> he's hungry. <laughs> Go and call Ahl Sufa. So imagine Abu Huraira gonna call all these homeless. Yalla! <laughs> for the milk. So all of them they came. All of them came to the Prophet's house. And the house of the Prophet was really small. So he said, go on, don't push one another. We are really <laughs> Don't push one another. And they're pushing inside, and all of them. Nah. Yalla Abu Huraira, give them. So he's hungry, and he's gonna give each one. Drink. So he can drink. And he's not feeling, there's nothing that's gonna be left. Each one will drink and go, Ma'ashallah, I'm full. There's only a bit of liver, Ma'ashallah, I'm full. Until he was the last, him and the Prophet of Allah. The Prophet was looking at him and smiling. Come on, boy, drink. No, Mr. Ali, no, you drink. So he drank. Come on, drink. Drink and drink and he drinks. Yeah? I can't find any path for it. That's it. SubhanAllah. And it was left for the Prophet ﷺ still. That's the barakah, the miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No way that that pot would be enough for about 400. Well, no way. But imagine how Abu Huraira has to be patient, hungry, and he had to call everybody, and he'd be the last one to, huh, to drink. Radiallahu anhu wa rahmah. So those are the companions. <laughs> I'll be pleased with them. So, I don't know what was the question, but... What is the captain? Uh, captain, alhamdulillah. Does that answer the question, inshallah? <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, you have any questions? سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب